Alrighty. We are uh, here in Princess Anne, and uh, we're gonna be doing a little bit of expansion, some expansion work today. Um, I got a two times one uh, running over uh, Mux to Mux uh, DWDM uh, system. Uh, this is the DMUX side. And right now we're running a two times one um, for, uh, I don't know, two, two gig, but also a little bit of redundancy kind of built in there, just in the optics. Then uh, today, we are going to be uh, splicing in this little tray here. Um, I've got uh, one fiber that needs to be um, spliced in, and it looks to be like a little bit of a pain in the butt for that. Um, but just need uh, just need one, I guess. Uh, might go ahead and just do two, um, just for convenience sake. Um, we're gonna be putting a little rack uh, in here and I now looking at the ceiling I hope that is going to fit um, but <coughs> excuse me we're gonna be adding um, a 10 gig wave onto this system and we're gonna come out uh, of, uh, from Salisbury so it's going 19 miles 19 fiber miles back to Salisbury um, we're gonna be not interrupting anybody today hopefully and we're gonna come out with a 10 gig wave um, out to our rack. Uh, it's gonna be right here. Then we are going to use uh, a switch, uh, same switch as basically an OEO, like an optical, electrical, optical. Um, then we're gonna regenerate the light pretty much just using the switch. And we're gonna set our um, mux. So we're gonna go from Salisbury, mux here, demux, OEO, here, then another mux that goes up to Pokemon uh, City. So um, let me get all set up here, and then I once kind of see some of it, it'll maybe make more sense. I kind of confused myself even just then. So, um, but cool. All right. Well, <clears throat> got uh, got my splice done. Um, just letting the, the tube cool down for a second. Um, I uh, got a rack. Uh, going on here and uh, another mux this is our mux demux that's going to be going up to um, uh, Pokemoke City um, this is the mux side the demux is going to be in Pokemoke uh, it's like 12-ish 12-ish miles away so this connection we're going to be turning up a 10 gig uh, connection today but it's going to be going boom this fiber goes 19 miles back to Salisbury um, then we're going to come over to this switch, and all this switch is going to do is a, a cheap way of doing an OEO um, conversion. So I'm going to be DWDM in uh, 10 gig. I'm going to use another port to feed the um, uh, 10 gig into uh, one of these channels here. So this will be a C26 and a C25 optic side by side, and the 25 is going to feed into right there. And the 26 is going to go back to Salisbury. And then back in Salisbury, I'm going to have a C25 optic there too. So um, we are going to be using an Odom on this build. Uh, two, two Odoms. Uh, optical add drop multiplexer, I think. Yeah, Odom. And uh, so we, on our line here, there's, we're going to intercept that in Hawks Plaza, uh, the 90 unit apartment complex. And we're going to feed um, uh, call probably two two gig up to that building, maybe five, I don't know yet. And then uh, we're gonna also have another um, Odom there in Westover. So each of the Odom, the, this site to my first Odom is like three miles. The next Odom is like five, four miles, three, four miles. And then Pokemon City is another three miles. So the whole build added up is about 12 or 13. Um, and uh, we're gonna hope that we get enough power coming out of this. Now I got 40 kilometer optics and the 40 kilometer gets me to Salisbury but that's a straight shot there's no Odoms on that so we will have to see how that goes um, but I'm gonna get all this uh, uh, get my splice put back in the thing in my tray and then we'll get all this turned on and see what happens Get dokey. so finally to the point got my switch turned on updated to the latest firmware 
I've got my 40 kilometer uh, C26 optic. This is a uh, 10 gig. And we're going to uh, get our plug in here. And <clears throat> same thing here. Now this is not going to affect any customers. Um, they are not going to know that I'm adding a 10 gig wave, um, you know, which is pretty, pretty, uh, pretty neat. Um, don't get to do waves too often. So there's C26 optic is now sending 1550, and you can see it on there. 15. Uh, 1550 56.55 is the wavelength for uh, C26. And uh, now we're going to go ahead and button this all back up. I also have our fiber that's the extension. And this is going to, so we're going mux to mux. This is a four, 12 mile run, and we're going to go ahead and uh, put that into our line um, on here. deal. Now, I always, uh, make sure to fill that expansion port. Now, the, I've never used it, but the expansion port supposedly, can, you can come out of that port over to another MUX and you can actually run 16 channels uh, over it, but I think if you do that, you're probably better off to just get the 16 uh, port um, system right out of the gate because I think it would probably give you better better power levels, probably more reliable and such. Um, so I'm gonna uh, be gonna be putting in like four probably, uh, maybe two batteries um, uh, in this rack so that this switch needs to absolutely stay up. It can just never uh, never go down on me. Um, we do have two phases of power, um, so I got two phases, and then we'll have uh, two batteries, and then uh, actually on the switch itself can accept two different phases, and it works really cool. I mean, the switch does not turn off, um, and I use that uh, quite often. I've actually uh, moved a switch um, through a wall and uh, was able to uh, keep, keep the uh, couple connections active throughout that entire uh, construction project there. Um, pretty neat. Uh, it just, it's one of those things that you switch has two power sources. Uh, really gives you a lot of ability to uh, expand and, and make better planning. But uh, this is um, pretty cool, pretty cool G-Pond spot. But we're going to be leaving this alone. And the reason we added a 10 gig wave is because I want that 10 gig wave to basically just skip this whole town. Um, we're going to be going up to uh, uh, Pocomoke City there with that 10 gig. Um, now we do have the Board of Ed here in uh, Somerset County, I think is gonna be looking at a 10 gig uh, connection. So I'll probably be using C28 uh, for them. And then I'll just take that wave straight back to Salisbury and deal with it there so that this is a, a relatively passive, um, you know, maintain stays as, as passive really as it can be. Um, you know, you gotta have power uh, eventually and you know, we're not the largest company in the world, so we can't really, um, we gotta be kind of frugal and, and plan in a way that's Lego, you know? We need to be able um, to, uh, to be flexible. I need to be able to add 10 gig waves and one gig and whatever, but I also need no customers to complain. I mean, we, we have 50 customers that I could have just, um, you know, knocked out of service there and, uh, that that would have not not been fun for uh, for for me really or anybody at the office taking the phone calls. Um, but so as I kind of continue on to this, I will uh, just be putting it all together. But um, uh, yeah, 10, 10 gig uh, DWDM and uh, uh, two one gig. So technically, I we've got twelve gig running over that uh, right this second. I mean, well, once I get the other optic put in, so we'll go back. Um, the Salisbury and uh, 
we'll plug in <clears throat> our uh, C26, I'm sorry, C25, um, into our panel back there, and we'll see what the heck happens. See if the port comes up. So, just heading heading back to Salisbury. Um, that is, well, not all that fiber. Um, that bit right there is uh, is us. Um, that's our case right there. Um, we're gonna be bringing the bucket truck out and uh, trying to get an exit. We're gonna be bringing the bucket truck out and uh, doing a splice there. So. Um, that's going to be part of this project too. Back here in Salisbury, we just had to meet, meet there with Windstream. Um, so the other end of my uh, DWDM system, I got my channel 5, uh, 25 uh, hooked up. It's 26 on the far end. And uh, I got my optic here. And it's a 40 kilometer optic. I have not plugged this in yet. So we are going to uh, see what the hell goes down here. Now it does go upside down. I got light. Look at that. That is a switch to switch. 10 gig uh, wave. It's going 19 miles. That is probably that's our longest uh, 10 gig connection that we've ever done. And I'm just going to dress this cable up a little bit. And uh, unfortunately, that's all I had for a duplex. We don't do a lot of duplex stuff, so. I'm just gonna bring her down and hide her in this tray and get on out of here. But I had to move these two switches, but ultimately they're coming out of here anyway, because uh, we're moving to this new platform. Um, this is the uh, uh, 5860 um, Broadcom chip. It's got uh, 20 10 gig ports, four 25 gig ports, and then two 40 gig ports that allow uh, breakout cables. So I'm gonna be using these breakup uh, breakout cables to then come down and interface with all my old 10 gig switches to clean up some of the cabling. Um, this does support BGP and uh, I got this joker uh, programmed for BGP so I'm gonna once we get our uh, co cogent connection it's gonna be landing right at port 1 and uh, windstream is gonna be port 2. Then we'll have a 20 gig blended BGP um, uh, route using our own IPs, and uh, I don't know what a third will be, but we might uh, ultimately use um, uh, our 10 gig through Maryland broadband into this pool as well. So we have a 30 gig blended um, kind of BGP path. We're able to take a hit, we can take a fiber cut. We'll have two cogent uh, connections, one over Maryland broadband, and one actually that goes through um, Cox communication. They're bringing it over here on a wave. Uh, for us, but um, that's uh, pretty pretty damn cool, man. I've never uh, I I was pretty confident it was gonna work, but who knows?